Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Dr. Barkis Ophthalmology Tutorials. Today we will discuss definition and classification of glaucoma. Okay, it's a very short video on classification mainly. Coming to the definition of glaucoma, I have explained each word of this definition in my previous video on the glaucoma introduction. Okay, if you have missed that video, please do go back and watch that video. So, to define it again, it's a chronic progressive optic neuropathy with a characteristic optic disc changes. Okay, with the corresponding visual field defects for which the raised intraocular pressure is an important risk factor. So before going to classification, let's see the pathogenesis of glaucoma in brief. So as you can see, this is a ciliary body with the ciliary body processes in the pars plicata part. The aqueous humor is produced, enters the posterior chamber, passes through the pupil and then enters the anterior chamber and gets drained through the trabecular meshwork. So, if there is any obstruction to the outflow system, there can be raised intraocular pressure. So, even when there is open angles, means you can see the trabecular meshwork, but still there can be raised in the intraocular pressure because of obstruction. The obstruction can happen here also, okay. So, I will be explaining how it happens. So, this type of glaucoma is called as open angle glaucoma, where you can see all the angle structures on gonioscopy. Yes. In the other type, where you can't make out the angle structure. See, it is directly opposed to the cornea. Means the iris is directly opposed to the cornea and you can't make out the trabecular meshwork. So, this, here it is obvious that the aqueous can't get drained through the angle structure. So, this type of glaucoma is called as closed angle glaucoma. There is one more variety called as all developmental glaucoma where the mechanism is completely different compared to these two mechanisms. So, you can classify glaucoma as congenital, open angle and angle closure. There are two more words which you come across when you are classifying the glaucoma. That is primary glaucoma and the secondary glaucoma. So, so what is primary type of glaucoma? Here, the initial events which are leading to raised intraocular pressure are confined to the angle of the anterior chamber or to the outflow system only. Means there is no other ocular or the systemic conditions which are giving rise to raised intraocular pressure. Whereas in secondary type of glaucoma, there are associated ocular diseases or the systemic diseases which are giving rise to raised intraocular pressure. Okay, these words that is primary and the secondary are not so frequently used nowadays, but still the primary glaucoma can be open angle or can be angle closure. Similarly, the secondary glaucomas can also be open angle or the angle closure type of glaucoma. Okay, so don't get confused. You can just classify it as congenital, open angle and angle closure. And just remember primary and secondary meaning that is primary means there is no associated ocular or the systemic diseases. Whereas in the secondary, there are associated ocular or the systemic conditions which are leading to raised intraocular pressure. So now further on, I am classifying this glaucoma based upon their mechanisms of outflow obstruction. Okay. So in congenital glaucoma, what they thought was, there is some membrane-like thing in the anterior chamber angle called as Barkan's membrane. Okay. So which could be the reason for the obstruction to the outflow system. Later, they thought that there are few more mechanisms which can lead to congenital or developmental type of glaucoma like high insertion of the iris means the iris gets inserted directly over the trabecular meshwork or there can be incomplete development of the trabecular meshwork only or even there can be hydrocorneal adhesions which will lead to congenital or the hereditary type of glaucoma. So, as you can see, high insertion of anterior uvea like in case of congenital or the infantile glaucoma, juvenile glaucoma and other developmental anomalies. Okay. And incomplete development of the trabecular meshwork only like in case of Axenfeld Rieger syndrome, Peters anomaly and there can be iridocorneal adhesion like in case of Axenfeld Rieger syndrome and even the aniridia. In open angle, the pathology can be in the pre-trabacular region that is before the trabecular meshwork or in the trabecular meshwork only or it can be post-trabecular means involving the episcleral venous system or the even the Schlem's canal. So in the pre-trabecular type, here this is the trabecular meshwork, okay. So if there is any problem in the pre-trabecular region like there can be a membrane, a fibrovascular membrane which is obstructing to the outflow system, endothelial growth which is covering the trabecular meshwork or there can be epithelial ingrowth which is coming and covering the trabecular meshwork okay or even there can be sometimes inflammatory membranes which are seen which will be covering the trabecular meshwork means the angles are still open you can still see the trabecular meshwork 
but there is some membrane like thing which is obstructing the aqueous humor drainage so the conditions are like the fibrovascular membrane growth in case of neovascular glaucoma there can be endothelial layer growth in case of iridocorneal endothelial syndrome posterior polymorphous dystrophy there can be epithelial down growth fibrous in growth or inflammatory membrane like in case of fuchs heterochromic iridocyclitis okay when the pathology is confined to the trabecular region only means the trabecular mesh work the causes can be idiopathic or there can be obstruction to the openings of the trabecular mesh work okay or there can be alteration in the opening or the trabecular mesh work okay so in case of idiopathic we have chronic open angular glaucoma or the steroid induced glaucoma in obstruction to the trabecular mesh work so these pores which are there in the trabecular mesh work get blocked by some of the things like rbcs or it can get blocked by macrophages neoplastic cells even the pigment particles this will come and clog the sieves of this trabecular mesh work so in this way also it can lead to obstruction to the outflow so the causes you can divide as the red blood cells which are blocking the trabecular mesh work like in case of hemorrhagic glaucoma ghost cell glaucoma macrophages can block neoplastic cells can block pigmentary particles like in pigmentary glaucoma or exfoliative syndrome proteins like in case of uveitis even the viscoelastic agents which are left after surgery can block the pores of this trabecular mesh work okay alpha chymotrypsin induced glaucoma and even the vitreous scans of trabecular mesh work and the third mechanism is where there is no obstruction like in case of pre trabecular region or there is no blocking of the openings of the sieves but there is problem in the trabecular mesh work only like the edema of the trabecular mesh work which is seen in uveitis scleritis or arclei burns secondary to trauma like in case of angle recession or there can be intraocular foreign bodies so all these will lead to open angle type of glaucoma next is post trabecular where you have passed the trabecular mesh work but the pathology is in the schlem canal or the episcleral venous system so if there is obstruction to the schlem canal like in case of collapse of the canal typical red blood cells which will obstruct the schlem canal or there can be elevated episcleral venous pressure thereby there is no drainage of the aqueous humor so in post trabecular there can be obstruction to schlem canal or elevated episcleral venous pressure the causes are given here these are different mechanisms by which the open angle glaucoma are seen means that when you do the gonioscopy angle structure is open but still the aqueous is not getting drained because of the reasons i said so the second type is the angle closure type of glaucoma so in angle closure type of glaucoma as i told there is closure of the angle structure means you can't see any angle structures when you do gonioscopy okay so either iris can be pulled like this or it can be pushed from behind so it is called as either pulling mechanisms means when there is some membrane like thing here and it gets contracted the iris gets pulled here okay and gets adherent to the cornea whereas in pushing mechanism there is something from behind the iris like the collected aqueous or anything which is pushing the iris and leading to iridocorneal adhesion okay so the mechanisms which are causing angle closure glaucoma are divided into anterior causes are the pulling causes and the posterior causes are the pushing mechanisms in pulling mechanisms we have a membrane okay if this is the angle if there are some membrane which has formed here like in case of neovascular glaucoma or iridocorneal endothelial syndrome or posterior polymorphous dystrophy this pulls the iris and there is iridocorneal adhesion or even the contracture of inflammatory precipitates will also lead to pulling mechanisms leading to angle closure glaucoma whereas in pushing mechanism that is from behind something is pushing the iris that is with pupillary block and without pupillary block so what is pupillary block means the aqueous which was coming through the posterior chamber passing through the pupil and going to the anterior chamber so this was the normal mechanism which was happening whereas in pupillary block the aqueous is not able to go from the posterior chamber into the anterior chamber pushing of the iris and the lens so in some of the cases of lens induced glaucoma like intumescent lens or the subluxated lens there is complete opposition of the lens to the iris so the aqueous gets trapped in the posterior chamber so which will slowly push the iris anteriorly leading to adhesion or the contact between the cornea and the iris leading to angle closure type of glaucoma so this is in case of pupillary block whereas in other category where there is no pupillary block the iris insertion itself can be abnormal means it has to what is the normal iris insertion it will leave some part of the ciliary body anteriorly and then gets inserted 
on little posteriorly but if it is inserting too high means it is occupying almost the region of the trabecular meshwork then there is obvious blockage of the trabecular outflow okay this constitutes angle closure glaucoma without pupillary block so in pupillary block we have pupillary block glaucoma lens induced mechanisms and posterior synecy whereas without pupillary block it can be secondary to plateau iris syndrome malignant glaucoma lens induced mechanisms so all these i will be explaining when i take each topic okay so so this is how glaucoma is classified depending upon the mechanism of outflow obstruction okay so to summarize the glaucoma is classified into congenital open angle and angle closure in congenital the reasons can be either the membrane or high insertion of the evl tissue or there can be incomplete development of the trabecular meshwork or iridocorneal adhesions whereas in case of open angle glaucoma the pathogenesis or the mechanisms can be at the level of pretrabecular region in the trabecular meshwork in that we have either obstruction to the trabecular meshwork or there can be alteration in the trabecular meshwork itself or the cause may not be known that is idiopathic and in the open angle type of glaucoma the third mechanism is post trabecular obstruction where there is obstruction to schlem's canal or increased venous pressure okay in case of angle closure glaucoma we have two mechanisms that is pulling mechanism and pushing mechanism in pushing mechanism again we have pupillary block type of glaucoma and non pupillary block type of glaucoma so this completes your classification of glaucoma so hope this video on classification of glaucoma was useful to you if you like my videos please do subscribe to my channel press the bell icon for further notification please do like and share my videos thank you so much